Welcome pre-cal students to class today on this beautiful Tuesday, January 28th. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today and hope you're ready to deal with some cold weather as it comes in. So make sure you take care of all of that. Um, let's see here guys. Announcements first of all. We will have a test. Excuse me. Your test is due Wednesday. Please don't forget that. Five points off per every day that it's late. Um, it must be in my hand, completely done, all questions asked by Wednesday. If you need help, I need one day's notice, please, okay? I need you to do that. Um, if you turn your review sheet in with the test, totally finished, you will get five bonus points. This Saturday, you will have a quiz. Don't forget, um, I've taken one full week off of the semester because we're taking quizzes on Saturdays. And by the way, here's how that works. We should have approximately nine quizzes. Not, usually a quiz takes about half a class period. When I was a teacher, uh, we would give the quiz and go over it. So nine times a half a day. Um, gives you four and a half days and that's just about one school week and that's why we're going 17 weeks. Number three, um, keep working on your integrity sheets. Good job to you guys. Everybody had them done, completely finished, so well done. Um, good class period yesterday. You guys came with uh, a lot of questions and I appreciate that. And let's go ahead and get started now. Get your notebooks out, your pens, pencils, calculators, and books. Let me get a drink here real quick. And let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at, in my opinion, a very interesting yet hard to understand topic today. Don't be worried. Just keep in mind, now listen to this, that you might need to rewind the video sometimes <clears throat> and watch certain procedures more than once so that it really gets drilled into your heads, okay? All right, let's continue on. We're looking at something today called mathematical induction. Mathematical induction, I encourage you to keep track of the date. The date today is the 28th, and the lesson number is 10.4, mathematical induction. Remember, I'm going to go fast. You'll probably have to pause the video numerous times throughout the class period. We are going to prove, now here's what we're going to do today, using mathematical induction, we are going to prove that an expression truly represents a series or a sequence. That's our goal today. We're going to prove that. Kind of like trig proofs where you have an equation and you have to simplify and, and show that, that both sides are equal to each other. Very similar to that. For example, if I have a series like this, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2n minus 1 and by the way this 2n minus 1 is my nth term and I'm also given an expression like n squared this n squared is supposed to represent the sum of any given number of terms my goal is to prove that n squared is a, two represent is a true representation of the sum. That sounds a little confusing. Let me show this a little better, okay? I told you that you have a series. That's easy, 1, 3, 5. And this is the nth term. So if this is truly the nth term, if you put a 1 in, you should get out a 1. And you do. If you put a 1 right here. If you put a 2 right here, go ahead and do it. You'll get out a 3 put a 3 in, you'll get out of 5. So this is the nth term. But this n squared is an expression for the sum. In other words, if I put a 1 in, that means the sum of, of the first term. Let's see. Put a 1 in. 1 times 1 is 1. And what's the sum of the first term? Well, if you add up the first term, it's just 1. All right. Let's put a 2 in for n, shall we? Put a 2 in. What's 2 times 2? 4. Now I put a 2 in right here, so that means if I add up the first two terms, I should get 4. Let's see if I do. Yep, 1 plus 3 is 4. Very cool. Let's put a 3 in for n, so 3 squared. What do we get out? A 9? Well, that if I put a 3 in, that means I'm going to add up the first three terms. Let's see if I get out 9. 1 plus 3 plus 5. Yep, I get out 9. 
So that's all that these two expressions did. One is your nth term, and we've worked with those now for quite a while. And this expression here is just an expression that gives you the sum. If you have just one <clears throat> or two or three or four, however many terms, you put that number in, it gives you out the sum. Okay? And we're going to be proving today that these expressions are accurate. All right, let me get a drink and we will continue on. So as confusing as this sounds, let me break this down into steps for you, three steps, um, while we're solving our first problem. So let's go ahead and get started. By the way, today's video, I'm not short on time. I'm not ripping off your education. I'm going to go, it's going to be a very short video. And the homework assignment's not that big. Let me glance at my sheet of paper. It gets one through nine. It gets ten problems. But you're going to see they're going to take a while. And so I'm being very realistic. All right. So the video is pretty short. We're just going to look at two problems. And then I want you to get into the homework and struggle and fight with it and work with it and watch the homework video and learn how to do this. Okay. All right. Here's the first problem. I want you to prove that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2 and minus 1 equals n squared. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Now don't forget, this is the nth term right here. And this term here is a term that gives you the sum. It's the sum based on the number of terms. In other words, just like I showed you back here on the last page, I showed you that if I put in a 1, I got out the sum for one term. If I put in a 2, I got out the sum for two terms. If I put in a 3, I got out the sum for three terms. And that's all that that is. Okay, so make note of that. And again, you're going to have to pause the video. I'm going to keep right on moving on. And the reason I do that is I have no idea how long to wait for you guys to write stuff down, Matthew um, and Caleb. Some of you write slow and some of you don't. I mean, that's just how it is. So um, I'm just going to keep moving and you pause the video as you need to. All right, here we go. First, we check the information that's given and make sure that it at least makes sense. I mean, look, sometimes you can rule out something, proving something, because it doesn't even make any sense. Well, we already did that. Remember how on the other page I put numbers in for 2 and minus 1? Let's go back and look at it. Remember, I put a 1 in, and I got out a 1, and I put a 2 in, and I got out a 3, and I put a 3 in, and I got out a 5, and then I put a 1 in over here, and I got the sum, and I put a 2 in, I got the sum, I put a 3 in, I got the sum. So the first step, I'm not going to do all that for you again, but the first step is to take your information, plug some numbers in, substitute some numbers in, and just check and make sure everything makes sense and is accurate. And we did that already, okay? So we're good there. All right, moving on to step two. Now, next, we're going to substitute k in for n. Okay? Now, let me do that <clears throat> and then show you why we do that, okay? We're going to take this expression right here. Now, just take notes, and then I'll explain why. And every, there's an, everywhere there's an n, we're going to substitute k. Now, really, it could be any letter, but I would like us to use k. That's what the book uses. That's what we're going to use. So I have 2n. So 2k minus 1 equals k squared. There. Now, can I tell you why I did this? Here's why. I hope this makes sense. We're trying to prove that these expressions here are true. Okay? And we're not trying to prove that using numbers because, my goodness, think about it. I could bring a hundred dogs across a platform and make sure every single one of those dogs was a Doberman. And you could draw the conclusion, all dogs are Dobermans. Well, look, I don't care if you bring across a million dogs in front of me and they're all Dobermans. All I have to do is bring in one dog that's a Labrador, and I've totally blown your theory to pieces. So with that in mind, putting numbers in really doesn't prove anything. I could go along and put in 20 terms and it works, and then I get to the 21st term and it doesn't. So what I'm trying to do here is to prove this algebraically using variables, not numbers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm basically calling k my first term. Now I know my first term is 1. I get that. I'm talking about algebraically, okay? I'm saying k 
is my first term, or really any term at all. So I'm putting k in, and this is a true statement if you think about it. Watch this. We're putting k in, okay? And we're saying, once I put k, now watch this. Remember, this is my nth term, right? So if I put k in for this, this is my first term, right? And so if this is my first term, and I put a k in over here, that's like putting a 1 in, and this over here represents the sum. So I'm saying this is my first term, and it equals the sum of my first term. And that's true. I mean, 1 equals the sum of 1. That's totally true. Now, if you're a little confused on the reasoning part, you can at least follow the steps. The steps are pretty easy. So the more you do this, the more you'll understand why, but at least you can just copy down the steps and do it. That part's pretty simple. All right. <clears throat> Let me get a drink here. We'll continue on. Lastly, we substitute k plus n, n for n, and we then try to simplify this expression to see if we get out a true valid expression. Let me come back over here real quick, and I would like to attempt, if at all possible, to cut, pull this over to the next page. We're going to use it. It might not be possible. Let's see if it is. All right, so remember this here, what we put k in, and that was like a representation of the first term, algebraically. So now we're going to put k plus 1. Now if you're adding 1 to k, that means now we're dealing with the second term. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, we're adding 1 to k. And again, if you're not quite understanding this, you can at least do it right? I mean, you can at least do this. Let's just follow the steps. I'm hoping you understand why, but if you don't, you can at least follow the steps. So now we're going to put k plus 1 in. Now be careful here, okay? Now when I go to put k plus 1 in, I'm going to put k in, k plus 1 in for n right here. So I'm going to have parentheses 2, and then a smaller parentheses, k plus 1, and then close your parentheses, minus 1. There. For this n right here, for this n, I put k plus 1. Equals, now for this n right here, I'm going to put k plus 1. Now, there's only one problem with this. Think about it. When I put k plus 1 in, that was my second term. And remember, when you put a k in for this, don't forget, remember when you put a k in for this, or a k plus 1, that means the sum, remember this represents, let's go back a couple pages here real quick. Remember this n squared over here I showed you, this n squared represents the what? The sum. So when you put a 2 in, you were adding up these two terms, and that's why you got out of 4. When you put a 3 in, you were adding up how many terms? 3 and that's why you got out of 9. So when I put, now watch this, when I put k plus 1 in, that means I'm, I'm dealing with the second term, and so I've got to add the first two terms to get this over here. So remember, this is my what term? Second term. So this here is my first term. I'm going to bring it down. and there's my first term. So if I'm going to put k plus 1 in over here, right here, right here, k plus 1, that's, that means I'm adding up the sum of the first two terms, then I've got to add the first two terms. And so there we go. So there's my two expressions, and most of you can do this. I don't think it's very difficult. And again, some of you might understand this, some of you might not. I'm not trying to say, just do what I say. Don't question me. I'm just simply saying that some of you will understand it and some of you might not, but you can at least follow the steps. And by the way, the more you do this, sometimes it becomes more understandable. Now here's what we're going to do. We're saying if this first term is true, then the second term should be true also. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this and hopefully make some substitutions and simplify and come out with a true statement. Let me show you what I mean. Do you see that 2k minus 1 equals what? What does it equal? k squared. All right. So see this 2k minus 1 right here? I can substitute that out right there. All right. I can totally get rid of this. 
and in place of that 2k minus 1 I can now put k squared. Now let's simplify both sides and watch what happens. Remember k plus 1 squared is the same thing as k plus 1 times k plus 1. Okay, don't forget that. And k plus 1 times k plus 1 is, you should know by now how to multiply binomials, you'll get out k squared plus 2k plus k. All right, now let's come over here to this side. Let's do some simplifying and see what happens. k squared plus, and now let's do some simplifying inside of our parentheses. See this 2 right outside this parentheses? Distribute your 2 through. So 2 times k is 2k. 2 times 1 is 2 and then bring down your minus 1. All right. Now let's simplify a little further inside my parentheses and I would have 2k plus 1 because a positive 2 and a negative 1 gives me a positive 1. And now if there's a positive sign out in front of this parentheses that just means I'm multiplying a positive sign through. By the way this should be k squared and so if I multiply a positive sign through I get 2k plus 1. All right. And by the way, this right here, and I apologize to you, when you did your multiplication right here, this should have been a 1, not a k. It's just a totally a typo or a right. On my, a, a, I wrote that incorrectly. And so there we go. Look at this. The left side now very coolly, if there is such a word, equals the right side. And that's it. You're done. You have proven that this nth term and this term that expresses the sum are accurate. And you did it algebraically. Let me explain basically what you did. You said if this makes common sense then we're going to go ahead and put k in for the first term. And if this is right then this should be right. So if this is right we can substitute it in and simplify and we should get out a true statement. And that's what you did. And that's all you have to do. So if you'll think back to the very first sentence I gave you today in your notes, I said to you, it's going to be a very interesting topic, yet hard to understand. I chose my words carefully. I did not say it would be hard to do. I said it's going to be hard to understand. But any of you can, can copy the steps down. That's not a problem. Um, Sorry, hold on. Um, any of you can do that. So let's at least copy the steps down and do the math. And I think the more you do it, the more you'll understand it. Let's try one more, okay? And then we'll be um, done and we'll go ahead and get started with your homework. Let me get a drink here real quick. Okay, anytime you're dealing with fractions and exponents for variables, it's going to be a little more difficult, and that's okay. Let's real quick, uh, step one is just plug some numbers in and see what happens. This is your nth term right here. So step one is let's make sure it makes sense, just common sense. So put a one in and you do get one half. Put a two in right here and you do get out one fourth. Put a three in right here and you do get one eighth. So that checks. We're good there. Now let's check this and make sure it really equals the sum. Let's put a one in and a one in. You would get two. Let's see. Two to the one power is two minus one is one over two. You get one half. So that works just fine. All right. Now let's substitute in two right here. Let's put a 2 in, and you would get uh, 3 fourths. And that's right. If you take 1 half plus 1 fourth, you get 3 fourths. So we put a 2 in, and everything worked out just fine. Now let's put a 3 in for n real quick, and you would get 7 um, over 8, 7 eighths. And by the way, that's correct. 1 half is... Um, 4 eighths and 1 fourth is 2 eighths and if you add 4 plus 2 plus 1 you get 7 eighths. So this last expression right here, this one right here, this expression is a representation of the sum of all the terms and this is your nth term. Okay, so did all of that work out fine? Yes, it did. So that's step one. Now step two is everywhere there's an n we substitute a k. So I'm going to put 1 over 2 to the k equals 2 to the k minus 1 all over 2 to the k. And that's going to be a representation of our first term. Okay. 
Now, we go on to our second term, so we're going to put k plus 1. So now I have 1 over 2 k plus 1 equals 2, and up top here I'll put k plus 1 for an exponent, and then minus 1 over 2 k plus 1. Now hold on though, remember, when you put k plus, don't forget this guys, when you put k plus 1 in guys, okay, when you put k plus 1 in, that's like putting in the second term. So when you put k plus 1 in right here, that means you're adding up term 1 and term 2 to equal this right here. Here we put k in, so you're basically saying the sum of the first term is just the first term. Here you're saying the sum of the first two terms would be the sum of the first two terms. So here's your second term, and you've got to put your first term right here. You've got to add them together. Okay. So with that in mind, um, we're going to take this expression right here. And let's pull it, there we go, and then put a plus sign. So this is your first term plus, this is your second term, and it equals this over here. Now we're going to have to make some substitutions, as you know, and then we're going to try to simplify this. So let's go ahead and make here, hold on one second, get my pen working here. All right, let's go ahead and make our substitution. Um, two, 1 over 2 to the k power equals this, so we're going to substitute that for this right here. All right, so with that in mind, I'm going to save some time here. I'm going to go ahead and slide this off the page. And I'm going to go ahead and slide this down, okay? A lot of sliding going on. Okay, there we go. Now, we have a mess. And what we're going to have to do here is probably open up another page and pull all of this over. And now we have a lot of space to work with. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this expression on the left side and we're going to simplify it and hopefully we'll get this over here. I love you all, care about my students, you know that I tell you all the time, this is not going to be easy. So get your seatbelts on and get ready to work, okay? Now, um, first of all, let's think about our exponential properties. If I have x squared times x to the k power, when you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. So if I had x squared times x to the k, that would be x to the 2 plus k power. Whenever you're multiplying like bases, you write the base one time, and you add the exponents, 2 plus k. Now, I'm not being mean, but that's old algebra 2 right there, okay? So we're going to use that up here. I'm looking at this expression, and I realize, hey, I've got to add these two fractions because I want to get one fraction over here that equals this side over here. Well, one denominator is 2 to the k plus 1 power. The other denominator is just k. So I'm going to have to do some work here. So I'm thinking to myself, hold it. See this denominator right here? this 2 to the k. Think about this. If I had 2 to the 1 right here, if I could multiply 2 to the k times 2 to the 1, look at that. If I could multiply the bottom times 2 to the 1 power, then I would have 2 to the k times 2 to the 1. The bases are the same. When you're multiplying like bases, you write the base once and you add the exponent. Look, I would have a common denominator. This denominator would match this denominator. So I'm saying to myself, self, if I can multiply this bottom here by 2, that would give me a common denominator. So I'm going to take this fraction right here and you take notes however you want to, okay? I'm going to take this fraction and I'm going to work with it down here. You can, mul listen to me guys, you can multiply a fraction times anything without changing its value. You guys are like, you can? Yeah, as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. Look, if I have one half and I multiply it by three over three, I get out 3 6, which is the same thing as 1 half. You can multiply a fraction by anything. <clears throat> Let me get a drink here. As long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So I'm going to multiply the top of this fraction and the bottom of this fraction by 2. Or in other words, 2 to the 1 power, if you would. Like this. Now watch what happens. 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k. Now come on, think about that. 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k. They have like bases, so we, we write the base once and we add their exponents.
and then 2 to the 1 times negative 1. Well, 2 to the 1 is just 2, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now, 2 to the k times 2 to the 1. Well, we're multiplying like bases, so we write the base once, and then we add the exponents, k plus 1. So there, I took this fraction right here, that used to be right up here, and I multiplied the top and the bottom by 2 over 1, 2 over 1. And now that I've done that, I have an equivalent fraction, but it just looks differently, okay? <clears throat> just like yesterday, you two men came to my house, you look different today. You have different clothes on, um, but you're still the same person. Well, this looks a little different, but it's the same fraction. Now look what I have. I have a common denominator. So if I have a common denominator, I can put these two fractions together. So I put a fraction line. Your common denominator is 2 k plus 1, and now we take this numerator plus this numerator. So here we go. I have 2 k plus 1 minus 2 plus 1 equals. And now look, what's a negative 2 plus 1? We can combine those. A negative 2 plus 1. That'd be a negative 1. We did it. This right here is equivalent to this right here. 2 to the k plus 1 power minus 1 all over 2 to the k plus 1. We did it. And so we proved that this expression back here is totally equivalent. So that's how you do those guys. I'm not saying they're super easy, but I don't think they're that hard. I think it's hard to understand why we're doing what we're doing. To me, it makes total sense. We're just saying if, let me go back, if this first term is correct, then the second term is correct. So we use those two equations to prove each other, okay? But I don't think it's that difficult. All right, um, let's go ahead here and get the assignment up for you to look at. And I did change the assignment. I felt like we could make it a little more. These are pretty long problems, so I went ahead and changed it. I'm going to make it 1 through 9 all, and then number 17. And that's going to eliminate some of the super long ones. I'm trying to save you guys a little bit of time here. But there's your homework assignment. There's a video for you to watch. Go ahead and get started and call me or email me if you have any questions. Please do these very meticulously, very cautiously, and make sure you're doing them well. All right. Have a good day.